Hi guys, a uh, bit of a strange one. As you can tell, we're all locked in now for the unforeseeable future. The date keeps getting pushed back, so I thought to myself, the club has to keep going, we have to keep going on, and I'm trying to make it a digital type club from now on. Apologies for the audio I am recording on my phone at the minute. I'm gonna look into different sound recording options as soon as possible. Uh, I'd like to start pushing this forward as a weekly or bi-weekly thing, depending on the amount of work that goes into all these edits. I'd uh, forward a little competition for uh, all the club members, and thanks to everyone who entered, it means a lot that uh, you're not only interested in the club still, and interested in photography, it's just nice to know that you're all safe and all keeping well. I encourage our club members to comment on the videos or comment in our forums that I'm hopefully going to set up properly for us. So without further ado, I'm going to actually go in and start looking at the images. Uh, the first one is from Jim Creamer. This is a great study of still life. The lighting is lovely on this. A little bit of blown out on the leaves just to be careful of and on the vase itself. It's got a real nice retro feel. It feels very, I don't know, Victorian, I'd say. It's a great study. Um, again, with just going in a little bit more in detail into the picture itself, there is a line going through at the top half of the image. I'm going to guess that's the light hitting off the back wall or something like that, or a light hitting off a mirror or something. And it's a bit crooked. Just be careful of stuff like that. It's not, it's not taken away too much from the image. Just be careful. And it also has a weird edge to the right of the image where it just cuts off. Uh, I like to see that maybe cropped off or just photoshopped off and straightened up. Uh, do do Let's see. The image itself is fantastic, but you've gone from the whitest whites and nearly down to the blackest blacks without clipping on either side. Again, the highlights I think might be clipped, but then again with shiny reflective objects such as faces, it's hard to handle something like that. So I'd suggest bringing in tracing paper or close the curtains or something like that and see, because I'm going to guess this is natural window light from the reflections on the vase and just see if that would soften the brightness of the light or something like that. The picture is very sharp, uh, the detail drops off as it goes further into the plant so you didn't overdo it with your f-stops which is nice. It's nice to see layering that way and softening at the background of the image. Fantastic image Jim, well done. I have an image from Hugh Logan and this is superb. The lighting is lovely, The it's such an abstract shape that from the thumbnail when I received it originally I thought it was like folded paper done in an artful black and white way but reading the description then I was like oh it's a ceiling? I did not realise it and even the more I'm looking at it I'm like how is it a ceiling? None of these lines connect in a way that I think they should connect and it's a great abstract look because there's shadows going in where there's highlights popping out as you see on this main triangle it's bright but with that line swooping out to the top right of the corner the top right of the frame there it goes into a shadow so that tells to me that this triangle is more forward so i'm guessing this is more of a weird angle than i even think the only thing that just takes away from it for me is this little triangle down in the bottom corner. It's a solid block of colour and it's just a solid block of grey. I'd either crop that out, or even better yet, just Photoshop it out. Just carry on that line in Photoshop with a clone tool and just make it an abstract shape. And this piece of work is fantastic. Like, 
it gets the mind going, it's nice, you can see this hanging up in galleries, it's just an abstract. And I'm getting really into my abstracts lately, and this is a fantastic representation of that in black and white. Well done, Hugh. Seriously. Wow. You probably guessed at this stage that I'm starting off with black and whites and I'm going to finish with the colours, so... It, it's just something that I'd like to do. I'm not going to separate it by person, because I'd like to see all of one thing. Then our eyes adjusting to colour and then black and white and colour and black and white. So we're going to stick just with the black and whites. And this next one here is from Paul Murphy. I like this. There's a few things that I would change on it. I can see you're using a tripod and stuff because nothing in the foreground is moving, which is good. You want a slow short speed as you've got now with the clouds moving, but the moon is heavily blown out on this one. So what I'd suggest is take an exposure off the moon itself, where it looks perfectly fine, and then let your long exposure run for the clouds moving, and then drop in that exposure of the moon where it was nice and sharp, nice and you can see the detail, you can see the actual things and just mask it in nice and soft and sort of get that going. Actually I might jump into Photoshop right now and show you with a stock image of the moon what I mean just to give you an idea of how you do that sort of thing. So we're in Photoshop now and what I'm going to show I again because there's clouds and stuff in the image you generally don't want to do this but I'm just giving you suggestions for the future on more nighttime shots. I love the slow shutter speed. I'd nearly, again, I wouldn't just say I'd drag this out even further. I'd let that shutter speed go a lot longer than you did. It's hard when you're balancing off with the light of the moon. And that's why I'm saying get your slow shutter speeds of the clouds and then you can add a moon in later or add this moon on top of where you've exposed for it properly. So, what I've done then is gone into Google and I got an image off the moon because I don't have one on file because I don't have a long enough lens to take a good shot of the moon but I suggest if you do take one for yourself and have that on file for yourself because the moon's never going to change it's going to look the same uh, so what I did was just copied something off Google I press Control V it pops in what we're going to do now is just shrink it down to approximately the same size. What you can do here is drop down the layer opacity and drag it actually over where your moon is and we'll zoom in to make it easier for everyone to watch. And we can drop down the opacity a bit more and I think that's pretty much spot on, a little bit too big. So I'm just going to drop it down a bit more and take that there. We're then going to use our magic wand tool, just select black area off that image so it's very faded but it looks sort of like this I'm not too worried about the pixelation it's a very small image of that you sent me anyway because that's the way we work when we're sending images to each other on this so I'm not too worried about that and I'm just gonna hit hold alt and hit the mask tool and then you have this moon in place it looks nothing like what we really want to see that matches this image at the minute so I've been messing around with this and I found that if you drop the opacity a good bit, stay on your layer mask, grab a soft edged brush with a low enough flow, so we say around about 30% flow, and then we start getting rid of this edge. Because it's very pixelated, it's very, you know, it's not looking like it's there. So we're just going to get rid of that edge as much as possible. We're going to go light here because we don't want to overexpose. There's only so much you can do to save this on the moon side of things, but I think that brings in enough detail. Then you can start dropping down that detail a bit more if you want, adding more in. It's up to you at that stage. Like In this image, it's very bright. It's very hard to make it fit. The other issue that you have if you are going to do something like this is the moon now looks like it's in front of the clouds. So uh, I'm gonna attempt something real quick here for you. So if we just, so the clouds here, so at that level. So what we're gonna do is grab something like here. And I'm just gonna right click and say, like new layer to copy, 
and just drag it over the moon itself. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to, let's see, mm, darken works well, because now the moon is set back into itself. And then we're going to go into a layer mask again, really soft brush, start brushing that over, get rid of that hard edge, and we're just making that moon sit underneath our clouds. So now, if we zoom out, the moon sort of looks like it's behind something. Oh, it's on the wrong layer, so it doesn't, yeah. Oh, there we go, now you can sort of see it's still a bit too thick. But you can start dragging down the opacity on them clouds. And now you have the moon itself behind your motion moving clouds. Again, be careful when you're taking a picture in, at night to not overexposed, but the actual image itself is nice. We could mess around with the crop a bit more. Could nearly go to, let's see, a one-to-one -one ratio. And crop in a bit. And just pull that onto the third. Something about there. And see what you can get. Always mess with your crops, no matter what. But Great image, great to see that you're using long exposure to try new things and really pull the length of time. Just be careful of overexposure because you were clipping into the white by a good bit. But you can get these cool effects which you're you're starting to dabble in and I really like it. As I said, set it up for longer if you could and make these clouds go super long, super dramatic, super soft and mess with it, have fun. You're doing well, come on. So the next image is my image, and it's an image of a tulip that I took in high contrast black and white. I tried a new lighting technique that I generally don't use, because I use mainly strobe and flashes and stuff like that. I like the quick burst of light, just a quick flash and that's me done, I'm out of here. But I tried using window light, as suggested by Hugh Logan on many of his images, he uses window light and the images come out fantastic. Props to him because I cannot handle that too well. Um, I did my best to emulate that style of window light flower photography. I tried to keep the shape simple, tried to keep leading lines. Kept it high contrast, more black than more white, and a few gray tones in between. Um, Again, it's my image, so I don't really want to go too much into it. I break it down a lot more because it's nowhere near as good as some of the stuff that I've been seeing from the club. Nowhere near as good as stuff coming from the club, but I think it's heading in the right direction, as, as long as I hope it's heading in the right direction. I can only ask other members about this sort of thing than myself. So, yeah, that's my image. I'll move on to the next one. Next image is from Rosemary. This is a fantastic image. The quality is low because obviously we asked for low quality images sent in, but I know that that detail is probably in there. I say this is an automatic image stacked photo because there's a few telltale signs on that. And just when you're letting Photoshop do stuff automatically for you, you can't just assume that it's perfect. You always need to keep a close, vigilant eye on these sort of things. There's a few misses in this image, which you can easily manually fix, but if you just redo the stacking, it might fix them themselves. Photoshop doesn't do the same thing twice. <laughs> it's like human in that way. Um, just here on the main clump of stems in the middle, uh, the leaf in the background gets cut off halfway. I'm guessing you reposition something or when you did the zoom in to get a different stack, the leaf in the background was at a different perspective so it got a bit closer or something like that. Be careful of that, that's easy enough fix. You can use your clone brush to extend the leaf in the background further out. Um, on the pod of the peas, 
it gets soft where it starts doing the spiral interconnecting. That is, again, it's stacking issue. You probably have the file where that P pod is perfectly sharp. Drop that in, mask that in in Photoshop and that's ready to go. It's a fantastic image, nice and soft lighting. The It really has everything. Just be careful of the highlights on the P, the front P. Obviously it's closer to your light source than the further away P. You can sort of see that sort of thing. So if you use tracing paper or something just to soften that first initial hit of light, it's fantastic, great composition, looks lovely, well done. And it is the season for this next image, it is daffodil season, as you can see. Um, this image is from Anna, it's extremely sharp, it is lovely, the bokeh in the background is great, it's even got a bit of a swirl, the bokeh seems to be stretching a bit, it's very cool, it's very nice. Um, the thing that I take notice on is the blown out areas on the yellow. Yellow is very hard to handle here in cameras, so always underexpose and then just pull it back up. The up the detail on this is absolutely fantastic. You can actually zoom in. They're low quality images again that you got sent in, but you can tell that in the high res file that de that detail is there. It's fantastic. It's a lovely study of the flower. For me personally, I'd use this as a base of a dress on a character or a girl or something like that. If you just flip this 90 degrees, you have a nice like blown out dress and it's like hugging the floor and stuff like that. And the black bit where it connects to the stem would be a great place where you could blend it into an actual dress, but this is fantastic. Um, just be careful with the highlights, it's the only real main issue, it draws the eye in straight away just dull that down a little bit and away you go. It was probably taken in extremely harsh sunlight as we're having like one of the best springs we've had in a while. <laughs> it's lovely out, but uh, it's fantastic. It really is. So the next image is from Fergus and I'm guessing this is the road he usually takes to commute to work and I'm guessing this is his dream that it was like this every single day on the way home that he didn't have to sit in traffic because it'd be lovely just to drive home on that and um, it's great the leading lines in this are fantastic it seems to end in the upper top you know third it's a little bit higher than the top third but it sort of still works because it goes straight into a nice vanishing point it's lovely. It's you, you rarely get to see a road like this in the mid midday and it's a great documentation of how barren the world it feels right now when you're out driving. And everyone's locked in, the world feels like a wasteland, it feels just empty and void, and this is a great depiction of that. It shows like on the right hand side there, uh, just an empty business and just empty roads and empty fields. It's just great, because usually you have to use a long exposure to get something like this, especially on busy roads like this. But this obviously is not a long exposure. It's just a, a shot. Fantastic. So another daffodil. It is the season. They're absolutely everywhere at the minute. Um, this is from Dawn. Again, the same problem as Anna had. The yellow gets overexposed very quick. It's a very hot color in a camera. It just pops with brightness and stuff. So try and always shoot underexposed. The focus is perfect. It's on the front, front facing of this flower. It goes off into the distance into a nice blur. It's perfectly on the thirds there. It draws the eye. There's Things look better in threes, they say, so you have the three, it's fantastic. It's very tricky getting these yellows. I've tried it recently because there's nothing much else to do. 
and yellow goes blown out instantly. A great way to try this is if you can set your camera to look monochrome on the back, you can sort of see tones a lot quicker. There's no need to worry about color at that stage because you're just caring about the tones. You can worry about color later on. If you're shooting in raw, it will always have the color detail. Look at the image in black and white on the back of your screen or LCD after you take the image and you'll see pretty much straight away where things are blown out. When it's color, this yellow probably looks fine, but it'd still be a block of yellow, but you understand me when you do it. When you get the camera in your hand and you set things up to only show black and white in the back of the camera, you'll be able to tell where things are blowing out. You can use your histogram as well, which is a great little tool on every camera, or even in Photoshop, you can look at your histogram and see where things are blown out. Have a look up if you don't understand how to read a histogram on how to read a histogram because it's very important to know when things are clipping and when things are, you know. No. Great image there, Don. Absolutely brilliant. Great. Uh, just be careful of them highlights again. That's all. Great work. Next we have our vice chair himself, Noel putting in uh, I haven't been in town in a while I'm just hoping it's not a real thing a tank coming down the, the street there in Mullingar um, it's a fantastic idea I really love it um, the tones are lovely it's nice and grey it's not too extreme there's a little bit of an issue on the left hand side of the image where you straighten stuff and you haven't cropped out enough that the car sort of duplicates. Be careful of that. Uh, I'm recording this after I recorded the Photoshop bit, which I'm going into Photoshop on this image to help you place in the tank a little bit more with shadows and stuff like that. But I thought this was a graphical glitch, but I'm looking at it now and it's not. It's just, it, it's a skew that you've done, but not cropped the extra bit that you skewed in off. Um, I love it. Um, so what I'm going to do is jump into Photoshop and I'll explain the rest. Three, two, one. So now we're going to just jump into Photoshop now at the minute and I just want to show what simple dodging and burning can do and how to make things look a little bit more realistic when you're placing stuff into a scene. It's a great base to start with so it cuts down a lot of my time. Uh, the only thing that is really needed is the shadows to make it look like it's real. And the way you do this is you take note of how shadows are in different zones. You see where I selected here underneath this car? Very, like underneath it's very dark and I think you've done that here, but if you notice, you need shadows underneath these tracks. You need to sort of give it a softer blur because the front bit of this tank will be jutting forward, but it'll be still at a slope or something like that, so it will be a softer shadow at the front. The closer something is, the darker it goes, so this shadow is fine, that's underneath, but it needs a little bit of a fall off, and these need to be darkened. And then you can start adding darkening to the panels and stuff like that to the tank. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to create a new layer, just going to grab my pen tool with a soft brush, with my flow quite low, I'm going to say around about 20%, just swap to black, and this is how I like to do shadows, and another thing that I want to notice, and I might try and fix now in a few seconds, is the sharpness. As you can see, on this car, the, it's very sharp, I don't know what's happening there, that's a graphical bug, uh, it's very sharp on this car, so the focus is sort of in this area. If you go down to where your man is looking at the tank, he is blurred. He's sort of at the same level as the tank, so anything at that same distance should sort of have the same blur. So we might add a little bit of a Gaussian blur when we finish doing the shadows. So what I'm going to start with is this black brush, and as you can see it just draws something like that. And the longer you hold down or keep going across the same area with flow, set down this low, it'll keep adding to it. 
So I'm not lifting my pen or my mouse off the screen, I'm just keeping moving left and right. And the longer you do it, the longer it will burn in the shadow. So you can really go in with this and go super light. Sorry, just undo that. So you can start going in under here, darken that down a bit. And the same on this one. Now I'm not gonna be perfect on this, but I'll give you an idea of how to edit stuff. Now as you can see, contact shadows, they're pretty much black all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is just burn these shadows in permanently, so they're like nearly clipping. And you can see already, that's sort of adding a bit of depth to the treads that are going down. Now if you want to be a real stickler, this is a very low res version of this image, but you could actually go into each tank tread and start adding shadow underneath. As you can probably see, it's very, very blurry and stuff, but you probably notice me doing this back and forth motion. That's actually adding the shadows on each thread. And that itself will sort of add more three dimensionality to your tank. Yeah. So as I was saying, stuff like this, this panel seems like it was sort of under the tank itself. The straight line seems to be where it would have been dipping anyway. So I'm gonna just add a bit of shadow to that. And do, 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 do. down here there would have been a bit of shadow, just underneath the barrel and stuff. And again, think about this. The shadows are going this direction. So I'll just draw a quick arrow. So the shadows are going that direction. We have a barrel of a gun that's coming really far out from this tank. So it wouldn't hurt to sort of have even lower flow, and just undo that. Just have something that goes along with the shape of the tank. So I'm going straight down, a bit of an angle there, because that's sort of sloped, and back in, and then pull it in. Just to add a bit more realism to it, I'm gonna undo that, because it's a little bit heavy, but about there, where I had it about two strokes in, it was just enough to sort of show that there is a line going down from that direction. Uh, I'm going to add back up my thing, back to 20%, my flow. I'm just going to burn in this side a little bit more as well. Because as you see, the light is coming from this direction. Everything should have a shadow on the opposite direction. Just undo. Now, apologies for the audio. I am just recording on my phone right at the minute. And you probably can hear background noises and stuff like that, so apologies. And another thing that I'm going to do now is just soften up this shadow underneath. So I'm just going to go over it once or twice. Pull off. That might be a bit heavy. So we undo. We'll just do it again. Yeah. So, with quick shadows and burning, you can sort of instantly see the tank looks a little bit more like it's actually in the space, it still might be a bit much in my opinion. So you can pull down the opacity on the layer, down here in your layers tab. Oops, I just unlocked it. So just drop that back in. So yeah, you can drop down your opacity and make things look the way you want it to look. I say around about 75% it looks fine. Because it's not a high contrast image, really. There's not much. Now, one thing that I want to do, I'm going to create a copy of the background layer. And just real quick, I'm selecting out this tank super fast. I'm not going to be super detailed about it because what I'm going to do in a second, I'll probably remove a little bit of that section because it's a bit too much. A bit from there. I'm trying to keep the straight lines that you can see because I don't want to overdo this effect. But we have something like that. I'm going to right click and just new layer on with the copy. And then we're going to go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And instantly that's far too much for what we need. So we're going to drop it down. And this is going to be a very small effect. What I say to do, do, do right about there sort of starts fitting in with the distance of your man. He's sort of the same blur level. 
you can see details on him, you can see details on the tank still, but it's sort of soft, it's not super crisp as it was on the tank a few seconds ago. I think that alone can drop the tank in a little bit more. But all in all, it's a good image. Just a little bit of work placing objects in. Well done. Our final black and white is from Marion, and as she described it herself, is as an abstract. And I can't agree with that more because I am still wrecking my head trying to think what it is. <laughs> um, it is really good. It really gets the mind thinking. It looks like a double exposure or that she moved the camera while focusing on something. She said in her email to me it was more of an experiment and it is, I like the effect that it's coming out with. I'd like to know what it was and what it is. Um, my mind, it keeps guessing what this thing is and what this object was before it was either photo manipulated or the camera was moved while taking a long exposure or it's multiple exposures stacked on top of each other. It, it's an intriguing image. It really gets me thinking and I like that. It's not a simple look at the image, you know what it is, you can move on. It's an image that you keep coming back to and you're like, what did you use? What is it? What? <laughs> you know, it's just, it's intriguing. It's got a beautiful shape, there's nice converging lines, the lines go, trail off into literal nothingness at the top. It's a good representation of things fading off into the ether and, you know, it's being sucked in from the land below and through clouds and stuff, you can do, look at it that way. It's a, it's a very interesting image, I like it, I'd like to see more in this style and i really really like to know what it is because it is wrecking my head trying to think what this is <laughs> well done Mary. so finally a bit of color in our lives so i'm gonna start off with jim again and they might not be in the same order because i'm just dragging and dropping and going one by one by what they show up in my files so this is jim kramer again and he's showing a jogger on the run without a face mask and in these times I hope you pulled him up Jim and said dude <laughs> you know uh, I'm unsure if he is photoshopped in actually I think he is and if he is it's a very good job well done Jim because from a, a glance at a distance I did not notice the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm going, I think he might be. <laughs> but then again, I could be wrong. And the only thing that might be leading that off in my head is that he's not casting a shadow onto the grass or he has no contact shadow on the floor. But it's a fantastic start because you've got the scale right, you've got the positioning where he would be on the, the paving right if he is photoshopped in. If not, the lighting on that day was a bit iffy. At a glance, you would not know, and it's very good. I like that, it's a contrasting red against the green, it's very noticeable. There's nothing blown out, the exposure is done right. Um, great leading line with the path, the water starts on a third, the bridge is on a third, the sky is on the other third. It's absolutely fantastically composed, really well done, good job Jim. So our next image is from Rosemary, and this is another great example of Rosemary's flower photography that she took there in the club championship. It's stunning. It, the detail on this is amazing. It's sharp. Uh, there's great, you know, great flow. There's a great point of interest at the front, and it just trails off, but it doesn't go into blur on the actual same subject. It blurs on everything in the background and it's really good. A few little things, again, be careful of overexposure in the bokeh and a little bit of overexposure on the petal, but after that it's lovely, really well done. I love the detail in this image and it's captured brilliantly. Well done Rosemary, another cracking flower shot. 
Now this next image is a fantastic, fantastic base for fantasy Photoshop manipulation. An absolute fantastic base and I'd love to attempt something with this and I suggest that you do as well Noel. Attempt something because you do like your photo manipulation so give it a go. Actually I think you might have already manipulated the windows and the door onto the boot. So you might as well go to the next stage, get an old woman and a bunch of kids and photoshop them in and make the little old woman that lived in the shoe uh, type of effect. I'd say the sky is very overexposed and the best way to do this I'd say go back out, because I'm guessing this is in your garden, go back out at night, light it with a torch, light the area with torches, do some light painting on flowers and stuff like that, get the nice dark night sky with stars if you can and do the same composition and everything and then you could do her calling in the kids or something like that for the night stop playing around or whatever or even put a nice little light into one of the windows it's a fantastic image really like it again love your photoshopping on the window and on the door for a good while there i thought it was just part of the ornament until I gave it a good close look and I was like, this is good, I like this. Um, you could also start digging out a little pathway in the front. Just clear out the leaves and make a little winding S path into the bottom left hand corner that she'd be walking into and stuff like that. And yeah, keep this one up because this could be an absolute fantastic little fine art composition. And really try for this because you have something here and go for it. This one here is from Dawn. I'm just gonna go across, there we go. This one here is from Dawn, and this is a look. How did you get into sit still for a start? In this good weather, they're usually darting around the place. Mine, my two are. Um, it's a fantastic shot. You've got great contact with the eyes looking directly at you. He's not too, you know, he's, he's, he's perfectly sharp. The details there all the way through. Like, it's not just, from the nose to the eyes sharp. You got the whole dog sharp. It's fantastic. Careful again. And it's a great time of the year to really practice this, not to overexpose. <laughs> Cause we got such great bright light. It's very hard not to overexpose. So it's good to practice against this. Just go out every day and take pictures in the brightest lights and see how you can counteract the terror that is the sun and we do miss our old Irish weather where we have this natural softbox sitting above us and we whip out the camera and the light is perfect every time and you think when you first get your camera you're always thinking oh it's a lovely day outside I go take some pictures and then you start taking them and you get these like bright white washed out photos and the color looks weird these are the perfect times to go out now and practice your camera work and see how to capture light and not overexpose. This is a great image though. Be careful of the overexposure. After that, this is a stunning shot. Well done. Really good work. Now the next shot here is another daffodil. Surprise, it's again daffodil season. We're gonna get a lot of these. Um, this is from Paul again. The From the thumbnail, I instantly saw this was well exposed, nothing was blown out too much, it was well captured. On a closer look, on a bigger screen, be very careful off your focus. It seems to be slightly off and that might be due to either it being a crop in or it could be because you're not using a macro lens to get these nice close shots. If you're doing the macro and really want to get into macro, I do suggest buying some macro rings off the internet. You can get them for five, 10 euro for cheap ones. You can go up and buy expensive ones. I got mine on Wish and they work with the autofocus. And I think they were like four euro, five euro, something really dirt cheap. The only issue with them is that sometimes it goes, uh, there's something wrong with the lens. I'm not taking a photo. I turn off and on the camera and it works fine, <laughs> so. So it, it's not good that way because you might miss a shot on an insect with, when you buy the cheap stuff, but that's why you buy better stuff. I only get it to try macro. I'm not very good at it. But this is 
well exposed it's just missing the focus so again if you're going with the macro way get rings and try doing macro with them if this is a crop in on a different image be careful and try and get closer to your subject up to as much as you can and if it starts getting blurry because you're cropping in don't crop in so much just pull back out it's fine just leave it out a bit further well done Paul and wow we're on to another stunning image by Hugh Logan uh, these are dead leaves which are absolutely amazingly captured the lighting here is superb and very artistic I'd love to see this in black and white as well it it works the color is what makes this though so I'd like to see it in black and white but I can tell you right now the color is what makes this image so keep it in color and don't listen to me wanting to see it in black and white keep it this way this is a fantastic study of leaves the detail is immense it's got a great sense of layering you can see every single like cell division on some of these leaves the patterning is perfect and this is a low res version that I'm looking at I would absolutely love to see this as the high res image it's fantastic like you got great layering going on as I said there's depth there's nice shadows nothing is overexposed nothing is blocking into black where it shouldn't be it's brilliant really well done Hugh really well done Hugh great work So we also saw Fergus's uh, drive in to work. It's nice and empty. Now we're seeing his desk. <laughs> what I'm guessing is his home desk. And uh, looking at his COVID-19 numbers, as I'm sure a lot of us are doing every single day now, uh, it's a good little study of life at the minute, where people are working from home, where people are doing their daily work, doing their daily commute on an empty road it's a great study of the times and really well shot there um, I love the composition of this image everything is laid out it's it's a not, it's a weird angle to see a desk at it's like you just walked up and just looked down but it's a great shot off this this is something you don't usually see this is someone's life this is someone's livelihood as well this is what people are doing now and it's a great record shot off the times where you're not out taking pictures of people you're showing people how you're living and this is a great example of that um, well done really like it now, the next image that popped up is Marion Heavey's and this is fantastic this is yeah <laughs> This is what I'm attempting to do when in my black and whites. This is lovely. Um, the lighting is superb. It's so delicate looking. I think just be careful of the overexposure on the whites, as I said many times by now. As I said many times by now, just to uh, underexpose by two and you can pull up most of other detail. Uh, I'd love to know if this is window or flash or stro, you know, or constant light. Um, it's brilliant. There's so much detail in this. It looks so delicate. It looks so dainty, if that's the right word. Uh, really, really good. It's leading straight out with the left-hand corner. It pulls your eye in all the way up, and there's no doubt about it where you want to be looking. Well done. Really love this image. The next image that shows up is my own. This is more along the lines of what Fergus was doing, of documenting, you know, his life and his daily commute. This is my abstract view of what's going on in the world at the minute. It's based on like holding your breath and like like cover your mouth when you cough or something like that. It, I just really wanted to get that feeling across that you're holding your breath to stay alive from now on and. I gave the camera like a real intense stare. I shot this in the studio at home and used the 85. 
It's a simple photo manipulation. I just put my hands across someone else's face in the house, photoshopped them off their face and put it back onto my own because I couldn't get my hands up in the right position that I felt that I wanted it. Because if I did this in myself in one motion, it looks wrong. So I went behind someone in my house, put my hands around their face and took the image that I wanted that I knew where the hands would be proper, like they were pulling in from behind this dark hood. That's my concept on this whole COVID-19 situation at the minute. And finally, we're gonna finish off with a nice little tulip to bring a bit more spirit back into us. I should prob probably put the puppy last as well, just to <laughs> get us out of this mindset that I've put us in. Um, this is again from Anna. Uh, I really like this. That it's selective, that it literally focuses on the tip of that tulip leaf. Just the tip that's bending towards us and the rest is soft. And it looks like a watercolour and it looks like it's painted and it's so... I really like this. Like, this is, this is a great little image. Even if you crop in or do something, that you can make this an abstract. It's well composed, it's well held, it's nothing's, you know, blown out. The shadows are fine, everything is perfect in this image. I love this. I really do. <laughs> There's not much more I can say about that. Um, it's an absolute stunning amount of detail just on that little bit of a leaf, on a little bit of a petal at the front. And it's amazing. Well done, Anna. That, I'd like to say thanks to everyone who put in an image and I hope any little things I gave back was helpful. Again, it's not gospel, you don't have to follow what I say, it's your interpretation of the world around you. It's just my comments on it. Uh, I, hopefully, I'm going to ask around and see if anyone else wants to join in on one of these, do a bit of recording with me, or do a presentation that we can post up onto YouTube as well. Something to keep the club going. If anyone has any suggestions or comments on this, down in the comments below on YouTube, or you can send me an email, send, you know, send me a message on anything there. And we're gonna try and make this happen until we can finally meet each other again and get the club rolling properly. Hopefully by the time summer rolls around, all this will be behind us and we'll all be safe and healthy and we can actually do some events together and get back on to doing some real good photography because the stuff our club is producing is really up there and you should really be proud and really keep at it even in these times really it, it's a great escape from the real world so leave suggestions down below and we'll do what we can Thanks for everything and keep safe.